Do you engage in the debate of just how much better physical media Blu-rays are, 4K Blu-rays are, than streaming the same content off of iTunes and the other services that are available for us? Well, here on the channel, I do all kinds of technical streaming face-offs, looking at bit rates and seeing what we're really getting on all kinds of different content from all kinds of services. But today, I'm going to look at about 17 different movies main movie MKV rips from the official 4K disc releases of these films, all 4K, all in Dolby Atmos, and we're gonna look at what's the video bit rate and what's the audio bit rate of that Dolby Atmos on all of those movies, off of those discs, and how does that really compare to the bit rates that we get for streaming. Now, some folks, some companies, uh, some marketing, all of that stuff would have you believe that like, Physical media and other types of like high fidelity, high bitrate stuff are just eons beyond the quality of a stream. And there's a lot of pundits out there and a lot of debate in enthusiast communities and web forums and groups and other things uh, where folks, you know, really like to run down streaming, how bad it is, how terrible it is and all of that. But we're going to prove today here that the reality, these two foes essentially are not as far apart as you might actually think. So we're going to run through each of these films really quick. And then I'll have kind of some summary information and the final, the final results of this comparison. Just how much technically better, generally speaking, is a Blu-ray release than a similar stream of the same movie. All right, first movie, 1917. Video bitrate, 77.4 megabit. Dolby Atmos bitrate, 3.810 megabit. We're going to see some of these swing quite, quite widely, actually. Baby Driver, and I tried to pick a bunch of movies that are like, you know, big, newer releases, movies that have really like high level expectations for the audio and the video of the films covering different studios and all that. So Baby Driver, 48.4 megabit on the video, 4.769 megabit per second on the audio. So a nice step up in audio here, but a step down on the video side. It's interesting how these, how these play out. Bad Guys, picking up some animation, 56 megabit on the video, 3.166 megabit on the Dolby Atmos lossless audio track. The Batman, the new one, 53 megabit on the video, 3.028 on the Dolby Atmos audio. We almost had our first one under 3 megabit. Blade Runner, 2049, 58 megabit on the video, 3.71 megabit on the audio. Are you seeing a trend yet? Bullet Train, I think maybe the newest movie amongst this set, the newest release amongst this set, video 68.9, audio 3.843, 3.843 megabit on the Dolby Atmos lossless audio. Dune, 59.8, call it 60 megabit on the video, 3.243 on the lossless Dolby Atmos audio. Elvis, you think this one would, would be one that might represent pretty high on the audio side? Well, we've got 60.6 megabit on the video, 3.021 megabit on the audio. I think the lowest one so far. Not n None in the twos yet, but the, the closest we've come. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, bombastic audio track, right? Big kaiju fighting. 58.5 megabit on the video, 3.797 on the audio, didn't quite get to four megabit. Lightyear, Disney Pixar, 44.4 megabit on the video, 3.648 on the audio. Minions, The Rise of Gru, I think this might be the top one in the video, 84, this movie got 84 megabits of bandwidth thrown at it, sampling thrown at it on the video side, 3.25 megabit on the audio side. Of all the films that we're talking about, it's almost kind of a shame that Minions, The Rise of Gru, is like the leader in in the video bitrate allotted to the best picture quality. Ready Player One, borderline the gold standard for demoing audio in home theaters today. Video bitrate, 63 megabit. Audio bitrate, 3.218 megabit. Dolby Atmos lossless audio. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, again, just trying to hit all kinds of different genres, studios, and all of that. We got 45.7 megabit video. 4.873 on the audio, Sonic winning so far. And I think in the end it ends up being the high on the audio bitrate. Spider-Man No Way Home, we had to get some more Disney, or get some Marvel in here of course. 54.3 video bitrate, 
4.054 on the audio. Not that many fours. This one managed to get up into that into that range. Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness 47.4 megabit video bitrate 4.419 audio. Another one solidly in the fours. Almost done here. Top Gun Maverick 67.2 megabit on the video 4.304 on the audio. And the last one, John Wick. John Wick, awesome movies, really great gunshots, fighting, that nightclub scene, standard demo fare for a home theater nowadays. We've got 58.0 megabit on the video, 4.955, this one actually was the high, on the audio side. So in the end, we got Minions in first place on the video. We've got John Wick first place on the audio. If I take all those numbers here and I average them up, the average video bitrate of all of these films is 59.11, let's call it 60, and the average audio bitrate 3.83 megabit. Both of these sizes, again, are measured in megabits per second. Now, if you go back to all my videos, sitting around on a Sunday, you're looking for something to do, go watch all of my streaming face-offs, and what you will find is that, by and large, today, good streaming provides a video bitrate, I would say on average of 20. We're gonna use 20 for the purposes of this video. I thought about using 25, but I think that's a little bit high. I think we see as many, I think we see as many in the mid-20s for average video bit rates as we see down in like the mid to upper teens. So we're gonna go ahead and call 20 as like the, the, the norm of a relatively gold standard for streaming video. And of course, we've proven this time and time again on the channel, streaming audio bit rates, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Matte, Atmos style streaming at its best from a, a plethora of services like iTunes, Disney Plus, HBO Max, clocks in at 770 kilobit per second, 0 0.77 megabit per second. So at the end of the day, if we take these averages, we divide them by kind of the streaming norm. And again, all of these films are pretty consistent. All of this stuff in 4K, all of this stuff in Dolby Atmos, both on the physical media release and on the what we've observed from, from checking iTunes and the better quality streaming services. At the end of the day, kind of round it off and for simple math, what do we get? Well, the factor, the quality factor from the physical release versus the stream is on the video side, we're looking at about 3x the bit rate. On the audio side, we're looking at about 5x the bit rate. That's pretty close, quite honestly, versus particularly before we had streaming Dolby Digital Plus Atmos, that these gaps were much, much larger. And I think this is indicative of really just how much streaming has caught up. And all it's gonna take is something else to happen, I think, to push these video bit rates forward on the streaming side a little bit more. We've already seen in some of the recent face-offs like Wakanda Forever, that we're hitting up into the 40s at least in terms of the peaks on the streamed video bitrate. Some of these averages here themselves for these 4K disc releases are only in the 40s. Four, four of these 17 films actually have average video bit rates down in the 40s. And here we can see also on the audio side a pretty tight band, right? Basically between three and five megabit. So the other thing that I'll say to like some of the pundits and, and some of the opinions out there, to the folks that say, oh, we're never gonna get lossless audio streamed for a movie, that takes way too much bandwidth. Well, they're streaming us the video already for those movies at or hopefully in excess of 20 megabit per second. They're already giving us the audio at 0.77 megabit per second. To, in order to stream lossless audio, as shown here, we only need an average of about 3.8 megabit per second, that's only three extra megabit. Apple, HBO Max, Disney Plus, they could all tack on an extra three megabit to these streams, no problem, and provide this type of stuff because we already see it. Some movies already stream higher bit rates on the video and adding a couple more megabit per film to cover the audio on this side, they can do it. I, I, think, I think it's coming, I think it will be here. I just can't imagine how it doesn't arrive at some point. And even again, we're not looking at 20x the audio quality for a, a non-streamed high fidelity uh, movie nowadays. We're not looking at 10 times 
the bit rate in the audio anymore, five, and only three on the video side. So what's DTS gonna do when we start streaming DTS audio and these IMAX enhanced movies on Disney Plus and who knows what other service? Apple already broke the dam when it comes to Apple Music streaming higher bit rate, high fidelity. Man, they can do it on the movies. I think it's coming, it's just a matter of time. And there you go. So what do you think about this? Sound off in the comments, let me know. Is this a shock? Is it a surprise? I will contend that if you're choosing to just opt to stream, buy your content on iTunes, even in a higher level room, a premium space with premium equipment, you're not doing anything wrong nowadays. This content is really good. It has a great technical pedigree and it's only gonna get better. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to support the channel, say thanks for this information, carefully crafted for your enjoyment. There are super thanks, there's Amazon affiliate links and all of that stuff down below. And otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff at least. I appreciate it very so much. Like, subscribe, share the video, leave those comments, and come on back for a whole bunch of, I think, unique and hopefully interesting home theater discussion and fun.